Hey guys, sorry if I'm a little bit echoey or it's airy in sound. I'm using the camera's built-in microphone because I don't want uh, my microphone cable, my external microphone cable, dangling while I'm working with power tools, and I'm going to start that here in a minute. But before I start being destructive to the kit that I ordered, I figured I'd take you and show you what's in the box. I ordered an Enzo Trapper kit. This is an LMAX. I got it from DLT Trading, and it comes with standard leather dangler sheath, which you see here. And then you got the blade, uh, pre-finished and all that stuff, pre-drilled, uh, just not, you can see the LMAX up near the plunge line here, if it'll focus, here we go, right about there. And uh, you can see it's got, this is a flat grind, and uh, it's got the V-edge, which I'll take out. I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to take this out before or after I do the handle, but just for grip and, and comfort and stuff on the stones, probably going to go ahead and assemble the knife and then modify the edge with uh, shallow convex, which is my usual habit. So that comes pre-finished. And then you get these uh, really nice birch handle scales. Uh, they come pre-secured uh, with like a red, um, sorry, red liner. And uh, then you get these brass Corby bolts. And if you're not sure what a Corby bolt is, and let me show you here. There's a stepped drill. Hold on, let's see if. Sorry. There's a strep, stepped drill hole here. Interior is smaller than the exterior. Cannot remember the exact interior dimensions, um, but the outside is quarter inch. And then you have this stepped Corby bolt, which I'll show you right here. There we go. And that outside lip will grab onto that lip on the inside, that tier. And actually it's a, it's a platform that holds that. And then you push this through the knife handle. And then the other scale grabs it on the opposite side and the Corby bolt screws into this. You tighten them together and it pulls the scales together into your uh, glue layer. And then when you're done, you can see the screw is only so shallow, so deep I should say, on the top here. That's the extent, and you can see it's not flush with this at all. So when you're done, the epoxy's set, and you're ready to go, you just grind this off, and it creates a smooth, uh, basically, rivet. Well, I decided that since I like the look of this stainless blade, the blade is in brass, instead of using the included Corby bolts, I picked up a stainless steel lanyard too, and that's something that you should take note of. The blade itself has a pre-drilled lanyard hole. The handle does not. But all you're going to need is a quarter inch drill bit and um, a, I recommend a drill press to keep it level. But you just line that up and, and punch a hole through it. So you have to do that in both of those. Um, and it does not come with a lanyard. Uh, because the lanyard hole is not drilled out, it doesn't come with one. Now, I ordered this from another supplier online. It's I think it's actually made by Enzo. It's a really short piece of of uh, brass tubing that goes through there it punches in real nicely I think this was like two bucks but what I did was I went ahead and ordered this off of eBay which is a stainless steel lanyard tube very strong and it matches the finish of the blade itself and then I also got oh, I also got this off eBay from a menu a guy on there that sells several uh, pins this is a uh, red interior resin and then you've got kind of this Y-shaped tubular um, stainless steel length of knife pin. And so I thought with this having red scales, that that might look nice coming out the, the face of the knife. I, I like Enzo. The performance, quality, value for the money has always been really good. And I played with the Trapper a while back, but not when I started like filming stuff. So I'm going to do this as part of a um, multiple grade trapper review so look for that coming pretty soon but i'm gonna assemble this and we'll see how it turns out and hopefully it doesn't suck so let's check it out
All right guys, so let me show you what I was doing here now to enhance the hole size here to make my pins fit. I had to get them up to quarter inch to match the lanyard hole up here. So what I used was a one quarter inch tungsten carbide burr bit and it's tapered and rounded at the tip so it'll actually allow you to start, see if I can get something up here. Now these are smaller than the existing holes uh, right here, but this will allow you to start in a hole and because it's tapered, it kind of self-centers. Um, and then the carbide will eat through that LMAX steel pretty easily. This bird bit does like to grab a little bit. So if you push too much and it locks onto the steel like too much pressure before it has a chance to bore into it, it will grab a hold of the <coughs> knife blank. So you just got to be careful of that. But this tungsten carbide is hard enough to eat through that um, LMAX steel, which is pretty darn tough. Standard titanium cobalt drill bits, they all lost the battle against the LMAX, but comes tungsten carbide in a moderate to slow speed uh, with that tapered bit just pulling down, not putting too much pressure, kind of allowing it to chew as the pressure is added. It takes a little bit of time to do it without uh, the steel overheating, uh, but it does do a very nice clean job. You can pick up a drill bit like this if you don't have one. My local hardware stores didn't have any in, in tungsten carbide. You can pick one up for about 15 bucks on Amazon, totally worth it. when you're scoring, when you're making the original holes all the way through at one quarter inch, not just the Corby portion, uh, going through the top or the bottom has a tendency to kind of push in the plastic on the scales here. It doesn't cut it cleanly. It kind of heats it up and bows it kind of like a, into a funnel. So all I'm doing is using this razor blade, sorry if you, can't hear me very well, but just using this razor blade to clean that edge up so that the pin does not grab a hold of the plastic on the way through. Let's see, I think it's pretty focused, but so it'll go through without causing separation and stuff. So that's all I'm doing when you see me with this thing here. And this carbide bit here, because it's got a rounded uh, tip on it, it's not good at penetrating materials, even this softer scale. So I'm going to switch back to a cobalt standard, kind of a wood generalized bit to actually do the rear hole <clears throat> in this one here. And this is all this is a piece of uh, kind of a sticky mat kind of material, the same thing I've got on my workstation here. And it has a does a good job of keeping whatever I'm doing from uh, skidding. And then I'm using these recesses here to allow me to align the pins in correlation with the drill bit so that I'm not putting uneven uh, pressure on a contoured knife handle. So just an explanation in case you were curious or it doesn't come out and it keeps me from having to type 500 notes on the screen. some sandpaper to roughen up the back of this scale to give the epoxy a little bit more surface area, a little bit more something to grip onto.
this all focused, but I went ahead and did dr drill a few little divots in there just to give something for the the blade to grab onto. These are sanded, but they're still kind of slick. So I just made a few few more recesses so that the epoxy, like I said, would have a place to kind of settle settle into. So, whoop, you're out of the picture there. Sorry, I was trying to move pretty quick there. So I've got the epoxy set, the pins in, and I've got some clamps here adding a little bit of force. Nothing, let me switch this one out for Erwin here. Um, nothing, nothing super, super major, enough to keep force on it. Um, to keep it together while it's being glued, but at the same time, nothing that would cause all the glue to be squeezed out. And all I'm gonna do now is run back over this with a little bit of alcohol and get some of the excess goop up right away. So that it doesn't bleed over to the handle. Sit overnight. All right, guys, show you what I'm working on this morning. Let's the camera will focus here. There we go. Um, I'm working on following the pins in the lanyard hold down on this side. And this is what I've already done this morning. So I've already done the uh, open side of the knife, right handed. And I've cleaned a little bit of the glue and stuff off of in here, but basically I'm working on filing down these with a rough file, and then I'll work on sanding and contouring the handle after that. Hopefully you can hear me this morning, it is raining. <laughs> and when the rain picks up on the, the shed metal, it can get kind of loud.
All right, all I've done here <clears throat> is add a rag, kind of loop under the blade in the vise to give it a little bit more padding because I really want this to be secure. I'm about to start doing some contour sanding. Um, I use the, um, the flat belt sander to do the spine and the pommel of the knife. And then I use the um, spindle rig that I basically made on my drill press to contour the base. That was basically just to shave off the overflow wood. If this is the tang of the knife, the handle scales will overset ever so slightly just to give you some wiggle room to work. And all I've done is sand that back even with the spine and give it kind of a smooth finish. It also helped grind off some of that excess glue. So what I'm gonna be doing now is basically just contouring. These come with a hard ridge at the top and near the base. And all I'm gonna be doing is, is sanding the contours uh, the way I want them and then getting uh, the, the wood kind of smoothed out ready for uh, maybe some light oiling or something like that. What I'm going to use to do this is going to be, let me get the rest of here. I'm going to start off with some 150 and I will be doing variations of, of pulling, uh, almost like shoe shining. And I'll also just be freehanding it. I've also got an excess piece of wood here. And this block I'm going to be wrapping some sandpaper around. After I do the 150, I'm going to move up to 320. And uh, that's going to really help with, uh, you, know, the, you know, finding out the wood and things like that. But it's really going to start helping me work on getting the, the metal on these pins and stuff polished up. I'll move from 320 to 600 to 1200. So this is after the rough sand. Oh, there we go. See the edges are much more contoured now. Those hard ridge lines that are right there are, I don't mind them a little bit, but I've rounded them out, ground them down. Feels comfortable in the hand. This back here has been all rounded out and smoothed. And then the, the 150, I need to hit this one again a little bit right here. I can feel it, but to go back through and make sure that these are as flush with the wood as possible before we start getting to the finer grits, which really at that point will only polish the metal. They won't really remove enough to change the overall height of it to any noticeable difference. So again, just some fine tuning. I'm pretty much done with the 150. Again, gonna hit this one pin right here a little bit and then move on to the, the uh, higher grits. Here we go after the 
varying grits. You see some of the wood's got a buffing sheen to it because of that higher grit sandpaper, but try to make a little bit better. Um, I'm going to use some, uh, probably some boiled linseed oil on this. See what that does to the, the birch. It gives it kind of a natural, kind of a glow, pulls out some of the grain. So we'll see what that does. Okay, done with the initial buffing now, and I have to say I'm loving how this knife is coming together. Uh, the only thing I really have left that I want to do on the handle uh, is I want to strop the pins. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this field strop that I have um, and just use some Bark River White Compound. Uh, nothing serious, but I think it'll give a sheen to the steel since it offers a mirror polish to knife edges. It should do a good job here and all I'm going to do is use it to buff the metal out. I don't have any thinner pieces of leather that I know will take compound. Uh, it would be nice to be able to get it on my finger and just do a groove like that, but so I'm gonna kind of show you what I mean if this will focus here. Okay, on this back side, all right, and again, it'll it'll be up to the glare. The lens I have, I don't know how close I can get. Probably right about here. This is the side that's just been buffed by the linseed oil on the on the wheel. And it doesn't look bad, but it still has kind of a uh, satin finish to it. And if I go over it with the white compound, see right there, even on this side, kind of a satin finish right here. Looks good, but it doesn't have the pop and the luster that that stropping does. So I'm just going to strop all the pins in the... lanyard hole and then I'll come back over it with a buffer again I probably could have done this to begin with but I wanted to see how the linseed oil would buff these pins um, just by itself Alright guys, centered the camera underneath the overhead lighting now. It's going to be a little bit brighter, I hope, to show you the final product. And so what I'm going to use to do that is going to be a comparison with a pre-assembled um, Enzo Trapper from Brisa in Finland. Uh, this one came completely done already, and it is in the M2 steel and in the Scandi grind. I'm going to be doing some testing. Uh, with a couple of trappers and different finishes, uh, different, I'm sorry, different grinds and different steels coming up hopefully in the next couple weeks. But again, we're looking at the handle. Now this one came with red liners as all the curly birch ones do. 
and it came with silver uh, Corby bolts ground off and a silver uh, lanyard uh, hole. So that's going to be a really good comparison. Now obviously there's going to be some differences in the wood grain, it's to be expected, but uh, just to give you kind of an idea of the fit and finish and how it came out. So that's the M2. And the L Max is the one that I did. And I just, this kit just came with a standard taper sheath. Again, full flat with a V edge, but I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the fit and finish of how this came about. So it's not perfect. Um, there's some little nuances around the hole openings and things like that from where the, the wood didn't get sanded absolutely perfectly. Um, but overall, I'm extremely, I don't know if I can get this in here. I'm extremely happy with how this came out. Um, I dig the red matching. Uh, the grain that happened to come with this kit has got a lot of character. Um, again, let me get this one out here. Uh, this side virtually featureless on the completed breeze of this one at the bottom. And then this side, they both have some, some flavor, a little bit more going on on the top. So as you can see, basically they're identical but just characteristic differences between the two. All right, guys, I don't know if you can hear the thunder in the camera audio, but that is my cue to get out of here before this thunderstorm that's on its way completely opens up right above me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative or a cure for boredom, or if you're like me, maybe even a little bit relaxing. Again, I hope to bring a trapper review, at least my perspective on how they perform, different steels, different grinds, in the coming weeks, maybe a little bit longer, and uh, you know, explore how these things do in the field. But I certainly did enjoy putting this kit slash custom together for you guys. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying all your kits, all your knives, and all your time out in the wilderness. And as usual, guys, until next time, be safe and God bless.